Welcome. My name is Ute Stefan. I'm a professor at Aston Business School and one of the principal investigators of the Sephora's project. Sephora's is a leading international research project on social enterprises funded by the European Commission. This video focuses on how social enterprises can stimulate social change. What I want you to take away from today's session are two things. First, to understand the different strategies that you as social enterprises can use to stimulate social change and social impact. And secondly, to understand the underlying drivers of behavior change. All of what I'm saying today is based on an expansive review of evidence. So it's a summary of what we know works. I hope to give you as social enterprises an opportunity for reflection of the different ways in which you support your beneficiaries and perhaps even to intensify your social impact. At the same time, mapping your current activities against the framework will also help to make a stronger case for their use, for instance, towards key stakeholders and funders. Just to give you a glimpse of the background, we followed a systematic review approach which means we searched very widely for eligible evidence. We identified over 10,000 sources and filtered those down through a rigorous coding process into 144 pieces of evidence that are covering 20 years of research and practice experience. And based on these, we developed our social change framework. The promise of social entrepreneurship is to bring about positive social change. Social enterprises, for instance, work towards greater social inclusion, to enhance environmental well-being and to improve health and education. What we don't know very well or don't understand very well currently is how social enterprises bring about this change, so which mechanisms they use. And this is the focus of today's presentation. Let me start by illustrating the connection of social enterprise and social change by using two examples. Positive social change typically involves changing the behavior of individuals first. If we take microfinance as an example, microfinance involves the disbursement of small loans to enable poor borrowers, typically women, to create businesses and lift themselves out of poverty. There has been a lot of debate whether or not microfinance is successful in achieving this. What it becomes clear is that it's not just the money that counts, it actually is the behavior change instructions that go along with it that enable women to improve their health, to be able to send their children to school. And also the Grameen model not only includes behavior change instructions and money, but alongside that it also enables poor borrowers self-determination by making them part of Grameen and actually uh, co-owning the bank. Another example is Midlands Together. Midlands Together is a social enterprise that buys and sells refurbished property and in the process gives ex-prisoners often the very first job in their life. Providing the job is part of how they bring about social change, but another key active ingredient is providing training and hands-on support to their beneficiaries to allow them to change their lives. The two examples illustrate that positive social change is a process that unfolds over time, that requires engagement with individuals, and that ultimately results in social impact. The positive social change framework differentiates two strategies, deep level strategies and surface level strategies. The two strategies differ in the type of change mechanisms they use to transform individuals and beneficiaries. They also differ in the type and quality of social impact that they result in. I will now discuss each change strategy in turn. What is characteristic of deep level change strategies is that they closely engage with their beneficiaries. So here, social enterprises work closely with beneficiaries to increase the intrinsic motivation, often based on altered mindsets or beliefs. They also work closely with them to actually help them and enable them to change by training, for instance, skills. And finally, they are very 
importantly, focusing on creating empowering opportunity structures so that beneficiaries actually have the opportunity to alter their behavior. What is characteristic for surface level strategies is that they treat beneficiaries more as responders. So they often use extrinsic motivators and incentives and also rely on altered decision-making environments to mobilize behavior change. Here, we don't see a clear association with how the social enterprise is organized, so with organizational practices. And what's quite interesting is that the social impact that surface level strategies can create can be very wide in reach and very imminent. However, it depends on the details on how an intervention is designed and often once, for instance, a changed decision-making context is no longer there, the social impact may not be very long-lasting. A classic example of surface-level strategies is nudging. An example for surface-level strategies is food labeling. This is an example that comes from a UK supermarket chain, so not a social enterprise, but it's very powerful to illustrate surface-level strategies. So food labeling typically, as we see at the bottom of the slide, involves very detailed information at the back of anything we buy. But Sainsbury's have switched this around and developed a circle with a traffic light system that's positioned very clearly at the front of any food. So imagine sandwiches, you pass by the aisle, you immediately see the circle. It's very intuitive to understand because we know green must be good and red is bad, unhealthy ingredients. This is a very effective way of encouraging consumers to eat much healthier and randomized control trials show that it really works. However, it also illustrates that these things are not very permanent. So behavior change may not be very lasting. If we change the food labeling again, consumers may switch back to their old habits and buy what they like instead of buy what they like and is good for them. So one of the key differences between the two change strategies is the type of mechanisms they employ and consequently the type of social impact they achieve. As you see in the slide, there are three clusters of mechanisms pertaining to motivation, capability and opportunity. And this is because there are three underlying drivers of social change that I want to go to next. What we know from the wider literature and what we also uncovered in our review is that there are three key drivers underlying any type of change in individuals. And these key drivers are first motivation. So to be able to change a behavior, individuals must want to change their behavior. Secondly, there is capability. So it's not enough to want to do something differently. One also needs to be able and have the skills to behave differently. And thirdly, there is opportunity. It's all well and good if you want to behave differently and can do it, but if there is no situation that allows you to actually enact the behavior, then there is no behavior change. Let me illustrate this with an example from recycling. So you need to be motivated to recycle. You also need to have the opportunity. So for instance, your council needs to provide recycling bins. And sometimes you even need to have capability for recycling because there are many different plastics and you need to learn which ones is recyclable and which one is not. So these three drivers of behavior change also point to an important contingency. To actually get individuals to change their behavior, it's not simply enough to motivate them or even to educate them and train them to behave differently. They also have to have the opportunity, for instance. So behavior change is only going to happen if all three drivers are being paid attention to. And sometimes it's very natural that people, for instance, know how to recycle. So social enterprises wouldn't need necessarily to build up beneficiaries' capabilities. But in other times, as we saw in the Midlands Together example or in the microfinance example, it's important to work simultaneously on all three drivers of behavior change. So to go back to the Midlands Together example, we see that they use behavior change mechanisms pertaining to all three drivers. They work with the ex-prisoners, their beneficiaries, to train them and support them, building their capabilities. They also change the opportunity structures they find themselves in by giving them a job and empowering them to live new lives. 
They also work on the motivation side, trying to change their mindsets and beliefs of how they can be and lead their lives. In our review, we identified a total of 17 different change mechanisms. So this gives you plenty of opportunity to intervene and increase your social impact. And you can also see that there are different, especially on the motivation side, many different mechanisms that allow you to increase motivation in multitude of ways. Similar, there are many different ways of creating opportunities and there are two different ways of creating capabilities. We also identified 12 different organizational practices. These practices reflect how social enterprises organize their social change efforts. To give an example, to be inclusive and grant opportunities for empowerment to individuals, it often is necessary to also have an inclusive governance structure where your beneficiaries, for instance, have a say. These organizational practices are again clustered by the three change levers and they're especially critical for the deep level change strategies. I encourage you to explore our additional material where we discuss these organizational practices in more detail. So I hope reflecting back on the learning goals, what you take away from this session is that there are two different ways in which you as a social enterprise can engage with your beneficiaries and create positive social change, either through deep level strategies or through surface level strategies. And these two different strategies differ in the way you engage with beneficiaries, either very closely or in a more distant manner. They also differ in the type and quality of social impact that they bring about. This doesn't mean that one strategy is necessarily better than the other. Indeed, they may complement each other and surface level strategies may be a very useful tool to first engage in social change efforts, which then can be built up through deep level strategies. And also we saw that there are organizational practices associated with each strategy. Finally, I would also like you to take away that there are key drivers of any change. And these key drivers, motivation, capability and opportunity, are quite universal to how any individual or societal change occurs. What I hope you take away from this session is that you can use these change strategies, the mechanism and drivers, to maybe map your current activities. Are you using more a surface or a deep level strategies? What mechanisms are you currently using? Which mechanisms maybe you should be using to enhance your social impact? So mapping your activities against our framework can help you to become maybe even more impactful and it can also help to diagnose where you stand when efforts are maybe stuck. On the other hand, I believe that the three key drivers of behavior change can be actually useful process indicators of social impact. We all know the difficulties in measuring and establishing social impact. It's a long-term process that often has multiple determinants. But what we know from our evidence-based review is that enhancing opportunities, enhancing motivation, enhancing capabilities jointly will result in social impact and behavior change. So measuring process indicators for each of these drivers can be a useful tool to document your social impact, your evolving social impact. This presentation is based on joint work with Malcolm Patterson, Kira Kelly and Johanna Meyer, published in the Journal of Management. The original work was funded by the Network for Business Sustainability and the European Commission. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to further reflect on this session, you find discussion points in the supporting material on the website. And finally, please look out, there are many more exciting Sephora's MOOCs to come, including the next one by the Swedish team on the challenges of social finance. Thank you.